Hello, viewers and listeners. Thanks for joining the show. Matt Marshall here, signing in. Ed and I had a great time during the National Preparedness Month, and there was a bunch to cover. And on this particular episode, we went over our typical one hour of content. So we're going to split the show into two parts. First, we'll talk shelter in place and evacuation planning. Second, we'll cover communications. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe on your favorite app. And don't forget to rate the show with as many stars as you feel we deserve. We hope you enjoy at Gen X Talking. Now, on to part two, communications planning. Well, hey there, all you Gen Xers. Great to be back again for a, another exciting show on making plans for preparedness. I'm Matt Marshall, overall preparedness enthusiast, and I'm here to remind us all with preparedness comes comfort, with preparedness comes peace, something we could all use a bit more of. And I'm Ed Wasson, a.k.a. Wilksy, and I'm here to remind us that with proper prior planning, you will prevent piss poor performance. Perfect, Ed. Perfect. Well, Ed, before I, I really launch into anything today, I wanted to start with a special thanks to our listeners and our viewers. Uh, hey, we've almost hit 700 downloads of our podcast in just about 45 days. That's a pretty incredible feat, uh, and, and we are super excited. Um, we wouldn't be here without you all, our loyal audience. So we thank you, and we thank you. Yep. Thank you very much, everybody. So as a quick reminder for those who haven't already done so, hey, consider subscribing at podcast.genxtalkin.com. Now, with that said, you could also, of course, look it up in any of your podcast apps that are out there. So, so with all that said, on to the show. It's National Preparedness Month and almost the end of it, in fact. Mm -hmm. That mainly means two things as National Preparedness Month. It means making a plan and it means creating a bug out bag or a go bag. We've spent some time in the past couple of episodes uh, talking about different types of bags. We've talked about everyday carry bags, go bags, bug out bags, get home safe bags, all sorts of really cool bags that are out there. That's not the end of it. We'll talk about more of that stuff, of course, in future episodes. But today, I think, Ed, we are going to talk on the other half, making a plan. Making a plan. One of the important concepts around around making a plan is first, we all really should realize that it's not just one plan, right? It's actually many plans. There could be fire escape plans, shelter in place plans, evacuation route planning, water collection planning, communications plans, financial planning. There's tons of plans that you can actually make. And so, so that's that's something that's important. It's not just about planning at, uh, just an escape route for your fire type of situations at home, but also where you're going to rally people, how long you're going to wait at that low at those locations, right? And so this leads into communications. Communications. Thinking about things like where do we meet up? When do we meet up? For how long do you stay there once you're there, right? Um, what's the secondary location if that first place fails? Yeah. You know, if you if you you're supposed to meet at a dock and the dock is in this is sunk in the water, where are you going to go next, right? Mm -hmm. So having kind of a backup backup or an idea of where you think where you know the rest of your family is going to go, or or the you know the rest of your party, whatever it may be, is going to be located. And then what are the next steps? Um, yeah. What's the direction I'm headed next if I'm, if I'm traveling? So, um, so if I ultimately know that I'm going to get to, let's say, Ohio, um, but I know my stops along the way would be, you know, Morgantown, then Dayton, then, then Cincinnati or whatever it may be, though that's going to be part of my communications plan, mm -hmm. right? And then simply... Uh, is the rest of my family okay? Right. That's a question. That's a, a something that should be communicated. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very important as we found out in, in um, communications in general, very, very important as we found out in situations like Katrina and, <clears throat> and um, the nine 11 attacks that if, if people can't communicate, 
with their loved ones, it becomes a significantly urgent situation and it causes more people to want to go and do more, probably cause more damage and more danger to themselves because they want to go try to fix something or go find their, their relative or whatever it may be. So, so it's important to just, if you know you're safe, just communicate it and you don't necessarily, doesn't mean you have to call somebody. Uh, In fact, I would, I would certainly recommend against it. Um, It's, it could mean as something as simple as a text uh, because text will most likely go through and it'll sit there and wait in the, in the queue before it goes through once, you know, once the, uh, the uh, communications is open. So that's a, that's an important thing to, to keep in mind is use text instead of calling. It'll keep the lines open for more emergency type situations. Yeah. Right? Very good point, Matt. All right. Um, <clears throat> but then we start talking about the, the communication plan. And that's uh, things like, uh, like, like collecting phone numbers of everybody. Yeah. Ed, do you know Nisha's phone number? Yes. Do you know Lizzie's? No. Do you know Elaine's? That's you know where it Jay? ends. Do you know? is, is, <laughs> that's where it ends, right? That's where it ends is with Nisha. <laughs> and the other thing that I can remember is one of my childhood phone numbers, 334 three, 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 yeah. three, because it was yep. one of those, what's it called when it, it reads the same backwards as it does yeah. forward. Three, yeah. three, four, three, four, three, three. It was the That's same cool. forward and backwards. Anagram or something like that. Oh. Yeah. Something like that. Or, yeah. Anyway. plan. What Matt's talking about guys with this combo plan is so important that it's actually <laughs> one of the initials for SMEAC, the five paragraph order in military planning, situation, mission, execution, administration and logistics and command and signal. Well, command and signal goes to combo is basically what they're talking about with command and signal. So it's so important that it's part of the, basically the five paragraph op word. If you, if you ask me, I think that's what command and signal means is mostly your combo plan. Excellent. Excellent. So it even, even falls into military planning and, and um, certainly in the, obviously in the, in the FEMA planning, ready.gov and things like that. This is a big part of what they talk about too. So, um, but so first you collect, phone numbers and Mm -hmm. it's, you know, family numbers because you're, you're surely none of us remember, none of us know our kids' phone numbers. None of us know our parents' phone numbers. Well, some of us do. You're going to make me look it up now, Matt. I know. (laughs) No, all you got to do is just put it on a little bitty card Uh and just have it, have it in your wallet, have it in Nisha's purse, have it in Lizzie, you know, have just put it in different places, have it, have it available. So people know where it is. And the other things you might add in are things like, you know, like, um, doctors, dentists, eye doctors, whatever your typical things, people that you would call so that you have that information readily available. Now, everybody, everybody today just has it as a a quick dial in their phone or a, you know, a, a list on their phone, but what happens if you lose your phone, if your phone battery goes dead, if you, you know, if some other thing causes your phone to get broken, destroyed, inoperable. So, so all those different things, very, very important to, to throw into a list, <clears throat> collect information around like kids, schooling, medicines, uh, other, uh, other uh, like um, workplace emergency plans so that like somebody from home knows where you're going to be going in a case of an emergency. Like if they hear your building is burned down, they know you're going to be at the Hampton Inn just down the road or whatever it might be. Right. Um, uh, out of town contacts, another, another really good thing to have. So if you know that you're out of town, con- like you've got some, some relatives in Arlington or maybe, um, you know, other parts of Texas, Yep. Have have contacts those listed in that same com, com plan <clears throat> in order to make that information readily available, whether you have your phone or not. Now, there's if we were if we were to back up just a hair to the the fire escape plan mm-hmm. and and talk a little bit about um, about locations that you can that you can meet up. Yep. Um, fire escape plan. Where are you going to meet? Where, what's your immediate rally point coming out of the house for the fire escape plan? What, what are some of the things that, or have you, have you given this much thought? What are, what are some of the 
thoughts. We were talking about it a little bit before, but what are what are some of the thoughts you have on family? And and if there's a, a an evacuation or something that needs to happen, how are you going to meet up with family? Where would you go? Anything like that? What what thoughts have you given to that? Well, we don't have a huge fire escape plan from the house because it's a very small house, and mm-hmm. we can just get out the door. And we have actually had um, some episodes where I tried cooking, and there was so much smoke in the house that we had to evacuate out the front door. So we were able to get out safely from that situation. And I ain't kidding, man. I had this thing fumigated. I mean, completely smoked out. But we eventually opened all the doors, turned on some fans and stuff like that. The, the fire alarms were going off. I think we were about to have the, the fire department called out here and everything else like that. But um, so we know if, it, if there is a fire, we're just going to there's one main egress route. And it's usually pretty mm-hmm. clear if there's not, there's. I mean, the whole house would have to be ablaze. We'd have to be surrounded for us to not get out one way or the other. Yeah. We can usually get out the front. Uh, I, don't, I don't foresee a problem with that, with the size of the house. And that goes to planning. You know, what size of house do you have? Uh, what's, what's the construction materials made out of? What other mm-hmm. materials do you have in the house? How flammable are they? But uh, for actually a diff- any kind of different scenario... There's a couple of locations uh, outside of our neighborhood to the north that we're going to use as a rally point up there, and we're going to text and things like that. So that's already planned out. Yeah, that's yeah good. we do. We that's do good. have very, very basic um, escape or evacuation immediate, like immediate escape or evacuation. I mean, within 15 to 30 minutes, we can get out. We can start rally pointing at this uh, certain a designated spot. Yeah. Um, I don't have a contingency plan for it yet. So I haven't told anybody, well, if, if this spot isn't working for whatever reason, go to this yeah. next spot. So yeah. we need to get to that next, next step, but um, we need to get our communications in, in order a little bit more and stuff like that. So. Uh, yeah. So there's, there's some, there's kind of this three-step plan that, that, many communications plans goes to first is to collect the information Hmm. right second is to share the information with those who are those parties who are part of the communication plan and so that means also if you're if you've if you're documenting an out-of-town phone number you're using that as a source as you know a target location where you can go then they should be part of it you should share that communications plan with them and then the other one is to train it and, and uh, I had this, this funny, funny thing. I'm thinking, I was thinking, you know, okay, you can train the, oh, right. You know, if there's a fire, you know, in, in this part of the house, where would you go? Yeah. Right. Okay. I'd go out these windows. Or if I, if there's a fire back in my bedroom, then I would go out this direction or if I, you know, but then I was thinking it would be awfully fun to wake up at like two 30 in the morning and just yell fire, fire. Run a oh, drill on them real quick. <laughs> well, be so another fun. thing too is, do you have any um, fire extinguishing equipment in your house? Very good point. Very good point. We, now we don't in this house. Mm. We have we have the we did have it. We have fire. We have smoke detectors. Um. And we had different fire extinguishers in different places that we've lived, mm-hmm. but we don't have, I don't know where they went. We need to go get our fire extinguishers. You need to go take a trip down to Sam's club or, yep. or Costco and get yourself a couple of fire extinguishers. Yep. yep we do. <clears throat> I just realized that Yep. thinking about this stuff, you think about it, you plan hey. about it, you t- talk about it. This is how and easy you, it is to make a plan. Yeah. Now we got a plan. We got, we're going to have a fire extinguisher soon. Yeah. At least um, one. So the so the the couple of other couple of other things to talk about. Um, so so there was collect the material, the information, share the information with people parties that are involved in it, um, and then and then to drill it right. But there's a couple of other things you might consider doing. Um, adding some <clears throat> adding some apps to your phone mm-hmm. um, that might be of interest. I mentioned an app earlier earlier in the show about uh, where I'm. I'm tracking criminal type activities in my area. 
And it's not like I'm documenting every week. Oh, okay. There was five threat, you know, thefts in this area, whatever. I'm just generally getting a concept of what's happening. And if I notice, my gosh, there were like 40 events that occurred over the last week, then I start to go, okay, something else is going on. Yeah. yeah. But, st- but think about <clears throat> in our area. Now we, we, I've talked about it before, but we've, we've, uh, we belong to this organization called CERT community, yep. community emergency response team. And so we get to take part in all these really excellent events, um, training events, exercises, things like that. But they also share with us these different type of apps that you get one mm-hmm. in particular, where are, where is an AED located in your community? Wow. Right? The, yep. the, the um, defibr- defibrillator in case somebody has a heart, heart issue, heart attack. And, and so I'm, I'm not thinking to myself that if I saw somebody experiencing a heart attack, I would go, mm, I'm going to look up on my, app. let's see, which app was that? I think right. it was this one and yep, wait, that's wait for one. it to load while that person's dying. I'm going, wait, hold on, wait just a minute. Okay. They say it's a mile down. I'm not saying do that. <laughs> what no. I'm saying is good point ahead of time. You know, you're going to a, a, a restaurant, right? And so you just do a quick little look up and you go, oh, okay, there, there just happens to be an AED. I'm not saying I do this all the time, but that's a possibility. So this little app just tells you where all AEDs are located in your community, in the places you're going to, whatever it may be. Okay. Now, now Very there's cool. going to, uh, let me, let me bust in here on this, Matt, and tell yeah. you. Yeah. Say there might be some listeners that are uh, that at that point right there, they're going to say that might sound a little bit, a little bit far fetched, a little bit too much planning or preparation or whatever. I agree. But, you know, I didn't, I haven't seen anybody get zapped like that, but I myself have personally been a victim, I guess you could say, of choking. I was at a restaurant with a friend. And we were talking, I was having some oysters on the half shell and, and for, for about the good first five or 10 seconds, I thought I was going to be able to swallow it. You know, when something gets down in your throat, a certain way, your throat is having an automatic uh, attempt to swallow reaction. You can't control it. And I was thinking now, wait a second, what's going on for the first couple of seconds? And then I realized, now, number one, I can't swallow this. Yeah. Number two, uh, it's not coming back up to where I can try to re-swallow it. And number three, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Oh, man. So after, after <clears throat> five or six seconds, and then my eyes start watering, and I start looking at my friend like, <laughs> and he looks at me, and he says, are you choking? Are you choking? So a heart attack or somebody choking in front of you where you have to use the Heimlich maneuver yeah. can happen. And he used the Heimlich maneuver on me and bloop. It worked. Thank, awesome. It worked. But I'll tell you what, for about 10 seconds there, I was about to wet myself. I was scared. Yeah. yeah. So that don't don't think of uh, if there's anybody out there that listened and heard Matt say this and say, oh, come on now, this. I'm yeah. not going to defibrillate somebody. You see those paddles everywhere you go. You see it says AED station right here. Yep. Yep. Um, it's there for a reason. And as remote as it may be, um, you you could be called into action. So don't don't um, shake it off right away. <laughs> yeah. The other thing that's really interesting about that is they are incredibly simple to use. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're 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 like three steps. Three yeah. steps. You open it up. There's yep. this super simple diagram to follow. You take the green one, you put it there. The red one, you put it there. Hold the button, charged, boom, done. Yep. You know, and yep. and you everybody hands off. You know, yep. it's so simple to use. Now, of course, I mean, you don't you want to do it without some sort of if training. You want to be shocked yourself too. <laughs> if you want a little ride, yeah, but no, don't do that. No, um, but no, that. The, so that's so. Um, I guess uh, point being there are apps that will, that will help guide you to those situations. And I think, you know, you, it's interesting. You said, we all see them. We all see them. They're located, you know, just yep. about everywhere you go. That's not true. 
That's not true. Not everybody sees them. They just see it as wall candy, right? It's just <laughs> something that's, it's just something sitting there. It's a, it's a, it's something they put up as a, as a display, right? It's just, well, just something to. Here it comes to paying attention and paying attention, not to just mm. anything or, or whatever, but yeah. almost everything and, and paying attention to the signs of the times. Whereas like, um, you might have a comment that you posted on social media that gets actually blocked because they say it's hate speech or it's sexual or something. But now I noticed that nowadays you can go into your Walmart and out there where they're selling, they used to just sell condoms. They're actually selling adult toys there. Now they're calling oh my it gosh. A, a massage, but it's basically a, a very germanely packaged adult toy so that's being sold right in your walmart these days so it's it's called paying attention to all the signs of the times yeah yeah ah man good point i think we all need to be prepared for that for stuff pay that's a, coming <clears throat> pay attention yeah and um like we've spoke earlier about the the logistical supply chain issue yeah be, be prepared and, and we we spoke earlier about Big government's um, inefficiency. They might have a lot of great individual employees, FEMA, Homeland Security, mm -hmm. whatever. But overall, the U.S. government is is huge, especially the Pentagon, stuff like that. Incredibly renowned for inefficiency. And I would not, I mean, I would look to them for guidance and answers, but I would not look to them for your own personal safety and security. Sol I would have my own. Problem. That's right. Yeah. I, yeah. Not right. don't have look to them to solve your problem. Yeah. Uh, you are the captain of your vessel. You're the commander of your life. You need to take that kind of charge. Look, look at all these signs and uh, of the times and everything and, and prepare because yeah. um, especially the way things have been going and uh, the media has now become uh a fear and panic industrial complex. Yeah. Right. I mean, I wouldn't look to mainstream media to uh, give you the best and most accurate and unbiased information on anything. Um, but you've got all that stuff going on and you can see things right in your own little neighborhood. Look at all these signs of the times. And, and uh, um, I would, I would encourage all of our listeners to get prepared as, as best they can for almost anything. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I agree. I totally agree. Um, so last couple of uh, last couple of uh, applications I'll talk about, and then we'll kind of finish up. Okay. Um, th there's a couple other ones. One's called Pulse Point, which Pulse uh, Point. yep, emergency organizations around around different counties they submit their events to this app, and mm -hmm. and um, the app will will basic. It's kind of like an old police scanner mm -hmm. where it'll it'll put these little these little dots for the different types of events like a you know a fire going on here or a person you know a heart attack going on there or whatever it may be there are all these different emergencies happening in your in your county and it's just an interesting way of kind of monitoring and seeing what regular events we had a we my wife and I were on a walk one day and we saw this huge fire and helicopters on the other side of the lake our other side of the, the river from us. And we had no idea what was happening. And so you just pull up this app and you go, oh, okay, it looks like, uh, you know, there was a fire at this particular location and there's, you know, casualties or whatever it may be. So it, it's just an interesting way of remaining involved in your, in your community and seeing what's happening. Maybe again, coming back to, if you're prepared, maybe you can offer some assistance and help. Yep. Right. Yeah. It, it's, <laughs> The, the application, guys, is called Pulse Point. Yes. It's built just the way it sounds. Yep. And it's it's connected to 911 and stuff like that. So you can possibly see most of your emergency calls going out. But as Matt said, you can, you can see things going on and you might be able to be aware of that and maybe able to help where you can. But yeah, also yeah. be real cognizant. Don't go over there where you might end up being kind of in the way <laughs> An, or another casualty. Yeah. Yeah. Or another yeah. casualty. So yeah. just be, be real careful how you apply that. Yeah. Another uh, two more broadcastify. Very, very similar. Okay. Um, it is a police scanner. So you can bring up your uh, bring up your area, you know, 
particular county and it, you'll hear all of the broadcasts of all of the the police scanners in the in the area very interesting to to sit and listen to i don't know if you've ever listened to a, a police scanner before but i used to do that actually kind of as a as a fun thing to do but what's it called again matt broadcast scanner broadcastify <clears throat> broadcastify yeah there it is yeah broadcastify guys yeah and then the the, easy. the the last thing that i would uh that i would talk about is a compass on your phone it's something oh. that a lot of people don't have and they have you know it's i think a lot of people don't really understand how to use a compass yeah um but just simply knowing which way is north yep so that you can say okay the danger is south so i'm gonna head north or yep. the danger is east so i'm gonna head west or whatever yep. it may be you know just something you can bring up really kit really quick now that's not to that's not to negate the fact that you in your emergency kit should have an actual real compass right you should have an actual real compass and as we've done some of our gear reviews we i did one of those little mini survival kits and it came with this little bottle Tiny. cap size compass and it doesn't work yeah so yeah don't rely right on now. those I, I would spend the spend the 15 bucks on a decent one or 20 At bucks least. Yeah, at least yeah. $15. Yeah, yeah. So and you're, sometimes you're, um, a lot of vehicles these days have a little bit of a compass in them, or at least it's telling you, generally, are you going north? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That A uh, lot of that, yeah, on the uh, navigation software. Use, yeah. use that technology that's out there, baby. Absolutely, absolutely. Until an EMP hits you, and then you're screwed. And then you're, yeah, <laughs> then I don't, it, does an EMP affect a magnetic compass, like a... A lensatic mm, no. compass? No, no. Nah. Okay. It's only electrical. Yeah. <clears throat> well, the, otherwise, you're just going to have to realize the sun rises in the east, mm -hmm. sets in the west. So that way is north and, and that way is south. And I, I saw this before. If you hold your hand where this is the horizon and this is the sun, each finger is 15 minutes. If you hold uh, yeah. it out at arm's distance. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Roughly, yep. Roughly, yeah. So if you if the sun's going down, you have one hour before before it's gone. So you better get some safety, some shelter, warmth. Word. All right. Uh, All right. So the um, the the last thing around 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 kind of making a plan is that that I've done is um, is I've traveled around my area, and mm -hmm. I think I don't know probably everybody has done this to some extent, and that is. Recognize where your Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi um, connections are. Free yep. Wi-Fi, I mean, you know. And of course, be careful not to not to use those on a regular basis because it's they could be, you know, cyber uh, at, at risk for cyber attack type situations. But if you're if you know that the local McDonald's or the or the you know the restaurant down the street from you has free Wi-Fi. Starbucks. Oh yeah, Starbucks has free stuff, right? Free, uh, free access. A lot of people free go there. Wi-Fi, but most expensive yeah. coffee. My <laughs> well, our coffee is only two bucks, but all the other crap is four or five. But yeah, yeah. have you tried a nitro coffee? I had. Uh, uh, Nisha did, I think, and she said it was really good. Dude, it's life changing. This will change okay. your life. I'm telling you. Now I know you kind of drink tea, so you do that foofy stuff. Well, but... no, I drink coffee, but also um, I've tried. I was trying that stuff called Onyx Onyx Alpha Brain. Oh yeah, yeah. As well, the, uh, Joe Rogan mm -hmm. uh, promotes it, and the pills aren't actually doing much for me, but they also come in little drink packets. The drink uh... packets are bomb they are working they're they're oh, good okay. and they don't give you the jitters but you're like you're on you're on point you're, you're on, on your it on, your head's yeah you're on it your head's on a swivel and you're just just a comfortable alert almost yeah. all day but at the end of the day no jitters and at the end of the day you are um you can go to sleep too so you're i done. thought it was yeah That's i thought good. it was great yeah That's not good. cheap though not cheap they're about two dollars a packet Ooh. Yeah. yeah, I think a nitro is about three or four bucks. Well, Man, so I'm telling you, it's like nitro. Then. I'm I'm telling you, you got to try one. Life changing. I'll drink one of those nitros, and it's probably got enough calories that you have to go on one of your long bike rides. 
Well, yeah, but whatever, man. That's why I do the bike rides. <laughs> anyways, anyways, wi fi Go look for some free Wi-Fi. Uh, just, just realize that it's that it's available and out there. Some, some like uh, providers like why like um like a Comcast network in the area. They'll do those big uh, like uh, uh, neighborhood wide wi-fi that you can connect to if you're a you know if you're a, a subscriber to at&t or whatever it might be so there are those or comcast i should say yeah. so there are those things that are available as well but also just no places around your region around your area so that if you find yourself in need need to pull over you know stuck in traffic or whatever it may be you need to need to pull over and um <laughs> the kids have used up all the all the um the high speed uh cell <laughs> yeah all your data plan on your data plan yeah anyways we won't go there right now so the yeah. last thing last thing i wanted to just comment on is um just everyone please just realize that national preparedness month doesn't stop at the end of september it keeps on going and we should keep on going in in uh making our efforts more more effective becoming more prepared and uh and making a plan so with that ed do you want to share some parting shots today yeah my parting shot for all this is going to be that there's a, a viral um instagram social media little video out there where it's uh, I think a current or former Navy SEAL talking to some type of graduating class. And he's saying, get up in the morning and make your bed every make day. Make your bed. Yes. That way, number one, you've accomplished something and your bed is ready to sleep in when you at that, at the end of the day. But in addition to making your bed every day, and I don't make my bed every day, but I get it ready. Once I get out of bed, I get it ready every day. Yep. I don't like, I don't tuck in tight corners and things like that anymore. Bounce However, a quarter on it. Nope. Yeah. Nisha <clears throat> and I have the bed pretty much ready. That way when we go in, we can just, we don't have to, oh my God, now what are we doing? Anyway, yeah. in addition to making your bed every day, at least think a little bit about planning and preparedness every day. Make it a habit. Um, people like to emulate good leaders and good leaders um, they're all about planning and preparation and we are all creatures of habit. I mean, think of it this way. What hand do you use when you go to the bathroom? Are you, you left hand, right? Should I share Almost, this with people? <laughs> it, but think about it. We're creatures of habit. Yes. Yes. And good habits are also like bad habits. Good habits are hard to break. Get into this good habit. Make your bed every day, yes. plan, and at least think a little bit about planning and preparation every day. It's going gonna, it's gonna to start coming more and more, and you're going to have fun researching it. You're going to find out new things every day, and it's endless. You're not going to run out of things to think about and research and plan yeah. and prep. That's yeah. my parting shot for today, Matt. That is awesome. Yes. And by the way, if you ever get a chance to read the book, it is an absolutely awesome book. It's a it's a great presentation that he gives, but it's a super short little book as well that you can that you can uh, that you can get on Amazon or Kindle or whatever you whatever you read on. Um, awesome. So fantastic. The, the, the Navy SEAL guy. Yep. Yep. Make your bed. Uh, make yep. your bed. <clears throat> um, so my parting shot, I've I've kind of already alluded to it, and that's. Uh, preparedness doesn't stop. It doesn't stop at Nash end of national preparedness month. Uh, it, we should all just continue to continue our efforts to become more prepared. Um, even if it's just for a fire, you know, a, a house fire, a, a regional fire, whatever it may be, even if it's just something as simple as that, just improve your chances of survival, your chances of being less affected, less dramatically affected by, by these, you know, potentially life-changing events. Um, keep going and remember that practice makes progress. Right. 
Exactly. Practice makes progress. Yep. And that's all progress. I have for, for, a, yeah. for a parting shot today. Yeah. Progress over perfection, guys. Mm-hmm. And again, we thank everybody for uh, listening and, and downloading and everything. Um, it's greatly appreciated. Um, you can follow us on TikTok, Instagram, everything else out there. And if there's anything that you know, we're very open, open to any feedback, mm, uh, let us know, let us know the positives or, or negatives, uh, the sustains or the improves what are for sustains? What are we doing that you like that you'd like to see us uh, do more of the improves wise? What is it that you would like us to, to, uh, what do you want to see us do or hear us do? Uh, how can we improve what we're doing? We're always willing to feed, uh, willing to, uh, listen to that feedback guys. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for that, Ed. All right. Well, Thank you, Matt. Another, always a pleasure and privilege talking with you. Another, another good show. Uh, until next time, this is Matt Marshall signing off. Ed Watson signing off guys. Be well.